everybody, welcome to uh, Breakfast All Day. Uh, I'm Matt. That's Alonzo. That's Christy, who is like a boss. Yeah. She's yeah. like a boss. I'm She's like, like a, a boss. boss. If a boss were five feet tall and had non-opposable thumbs. Um, so I am you like... Have a th- you have... They're opposed- very small. I have little tiny little hands. Hmm. But your thumbs but still oppose. <laughs> right. You're no Megan Fox. Um, and her weird thumbs. What happened to Megan Fox? She's got thumbs? weird thumbs. She's, She's got, got thumbs like the, the the heroine of even cowgirls get the blues. What like they? No, mean? no, they're not that big. Well, but they're they're yeah, they're just off. they're off. Like, because the, the internet had to find something about Megan right. Fox that was a problem. Anyway, like a boss. We'll <laughs> why talk don't you about tell us now. about it? Because I will. Because you loved it so. Because I'm a girl, and this is a movie meant for girls. They they give out free wine and beer before the screening. This, oh, this yeah. is what tells that yeah they, confidence. This tells you a lot. But they also gave out free wine and beer before cats. No, those weren't. That wasn't wine and beer. That was straight up booze. That was cocktails. That was cocktails. What, what, what were the cats drinks? Uh, I, something with vodka and something with prosecco and some other alcohol. Oh. Yeah, like, I think if we'd asked, they would have given us a shot of Demerol. Before the <laughs> they should have. Jellical shots. So <laughs> as opposed to Jello shots. I so, like it. Um, so like a boss, um, Tiffany Haddish and Rose Byrne are best friends since middle school. We see this flashback photo montage of them through the years. They started messing around with makeup when they were in middle school and they launched their cosmetics brand out of their garage in college. And now 20 years later, they have a thriving sort of business called Mia and Mel. Or is it Mel and Mia? It's Mia and Mel. Mia and Mel, I think. And they have a little store in Atlanta. They have online sales and it all seems to be going fine. But the truth is that they are struggling financially. So perfect time for the cosmetic CEO Maven, played by Selma Hayek, to swoop in and offer to buy their company. This tears a wedge between Tiffany Haddish and Rose Byrne's characters because Tiffany Haddish is skeptical of her and wants to maintain creative control. And Rose Byrne is like, we got to do this. We are like nearly half a million dollars in debt. She could save us. And Salma Hayek is doing this insane over the top. I don't know what she's doing. She's got like this like wavy orange wig and bright green color contacts and these bizarre fake teeth. And they've like, they've painted her orange and she wears, she's like a, she's like Jessica Rabbit almost kind of like a real life petite Jessica Rabbit. Crossed with Donald Trump. Yeah. Yeah, Maybe she's supposed to. Oompa Loompa. <laughs> she's, she's like a little petite Oompa Loompa, and she's the cosmetic CEO, and she's just, she's quirky. Because the Oompa Loompas are gigantic. And yeah, no, yeah, she's like a, cur- <laughs> well, she's like a cooby. <laughs> Sorry. She's like, she. I can joke about my height, but you're not allowed to. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so, so, but the whole point beyond just being um, greedy and craven, the whole point for Selma Hayek's character, Clara Luna, is to tear these friends apart. Yes. And this is a movie about women written and directed by men mm. who mm. have no idea about how women actually relate to each other. <laughs> I kind of found it appalling because the whole point of it is like supposedly the fun of watching women tear each other apart. Uh, and that's not fun. No, you're, you're right. I mean, like I, I, I'm the, the only reason I'm kinder to this movie than you are is because like, it's one of those comedies where it's not good, but I laughed a lot. Like there's a lot but of what individual, did you laugh at? Though? No, 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 no. But uh, there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of individual lines that are funny. But then ultimately, it was like this is a movie that's trying to say something about like female friendship and women in the workforce and uh, women who sort of espouse a brand of feminism, but really are using that as a cover for their own sort of like fucked up toxic stuff. And then I was like, and two guys wrote this and a guy directed it, mm-hmm. you know. And and so I agree with you that. It falls with a clang, and the worst parts are the parts where it's trying to go deep on that stuff. But this is one of those movies where they have cast a deep comic bench of people who don't get to do very much. Who don't get mostly don't get to do very much. I mean, like this is one says sadly in a series of movies that doesn't know what to do with Jennifer Coolidge, what? which yeah. breaks my heart because I think she's a genius. But like, there's some fun Billy Porter stuff. There's some fun Jessica St. Clair stuff. There's some fun Ari Grainer stuff. Um, you know, but like, yeah, these two guys wrote for like Ryan Hansen solves crimes on television, and the whole What's time that? It, it's uh, Ryan Hansen is the guy who plays one of the the, the two straight guys oh. with the company, oh, the right. tall blonde one. Mm-hmm. Um, he was on Veronica Mars. 
no. Anyway. Anyway, he, he was on Party Down. They're dudes who write for dudes. Anyway, yeah. So there, there is unfortunately a, 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 a strong stench of dude on this movie <laughs> that should be about women, you know, given the people who are in it. And Haddish and Rose Byrne obviously are brilliantly funny and, and Salma Hayek can be in the right material. Miguel Arteta at this point I think is just sort of like – kind of a for hire guy like he, he had you know he did chuck and buck and 20 years ago he did chuck and buck yeah i mean he did, and the good girl i mean yeah and he did beatrice at dinner which was an attempt to do something i didn't which also starred very, Salma Hayek. exactly i didn't think it's very good but no i i i was amused by a lot of stuff that wasn't misogynist but yeah. i think that <laughs> but ultimately i think the movie doesn't know how to tell the story that it wants to tell but then i mean beyond the fact that it might have this you know underlying confused and misogynist message about how women relate to each other like it's just like Lap together. I mean, there are all these sequences of people just standing across from each other, explaining themselves to each yeah. other, and then toward the end, like, like, like <laughs> apparently they were doing it in song. But it, the, and then at the end, when the, the the two of them, like spoiler, they fight and then they have to reconcile. They are both apologizing for these character traits that we never saw any evidence of previously. No, totally. So one of them saying like, oh, you were always there for me being the caretaker when the other was supposed to be the caretaker and <laughs> and all these things about she was the one who stayed late at the store and cleaned up all of the lotions and the soap so that you could come in the next morning and, and have a playground like – what? Where did any of this come from? And so the stuff that's supposed to make them complicated and deep, like it's never been on the page yeah. prior to them standing there hugging each other and crying. Yeah, it doesn't like, lay its own foundation. We don't know who these people are. <laughs> <laughs> um, and just having Rose Byrne and Tiffany Hash play off of each other as promising of a prospect as that is, there's nothing to it if it's not on the page. No, and, totally. and and so um There are gags that land, but it's not a good movie. The Billy <laughs> so there's one there's exactly one thing that I laughed at, and that is Billy Porter. Billy Porter mm. gets this really funny, showy moment that is great. Mm. And it made me long for more of just like letting Billy Porter be funny. Anyway, Matt, please. Uh so Two large free glasses of wine <laughs> go a long way in this movie. I they should were have given giving, you my drink ticket. Uh, Gray, Drake, and mm -hmm. I picked up extra drink tickets. I gave them mine. Yeah. Uh, and Gray comes in with like three or four glasses of wine. And um, that went a long way. Did it help? That, it absolutely did. Uh, I, this movie is very much like it, you could – it feels like a gender swapped movie, right? Like it took a movie about two dudes who have a business. Right. And it is a like, bromance for right, sure right. It's, about it's, women. It's kind of a bromance, but it's like, oh, hey, we'll cast women in it. And so there's it like there's nothing that make these women particularly feminine and have real female problems. Now I will say there's a couple things that it does that you know, like Rose Byrne has this one night stand and nobody gives her shit about it. And it's fine. And like, there's a, I thought there was a funny laugh about like the guy's like, can I call you? And she's like, Nope. And there, and they, the movie doesn't give them love interest. I will. I think there's points for that in terms of like, it is, it does as badly as it focuses on their friendship and explaining it. At least it, I think a, 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 an even worse movie would have felt the need to like throw actual boyfriends at them or like, have them by the end because that's how you have to have a happy right. ending. This is like that. That is at least off the table. This is a movie that would would fail the reverse Bechdel test, <laughs> right? Like there are no dudes that don't talk about anything but the main characters. I laughed more than certainly more than you did, and I think more than Alonzo. But again, the wine goes a long way. Right. Um, I, I was I, thinking. Go ahead. I, I like Tiffany Haddish. I I think that um, you know the the friends at the. Uh, with the other mom friends and married friends they Jessica have. Jessica St. Clair. Yeah, like they're kind of fun. Um, I, You know, it's a treat to see Rose Byrne do comedy all the time. Um, I think they had decent chemistry. Uh, you know, I, yes, I wish that this was better written, but it kind of worked for me. But again, it's kind of the wine talking. We need, we need to put an um, asterisk next to Matt's number. Uh, no, that's normal for me. <laughs> um, no, I, I, I had a good time at this movie, and I – expected i guess part of it is i expected something far far worse from a january release mm -hmm. um true you know but then again like i'm a dude so I, like oh it's dude humor it happens to be women like okay i, I thought that yeah i thought that too that it is it's a bromance it's about like stunted people like there's a, a certain arrested development to these characters um they're both like 40 and they still live together in this kind of crappy house and um and ultimately it as Alonzo says, like, 
it doesn't foist men upon them as the answer to solving their problems. And I guess like big points for that, but it is definitely, you can see how these could have been men. This, this yeah. could have been like super bad. This could have been like stepbrothers, like guys who were stunted, who were, you know, but not that stuck like, to each other. Not as over the top, right? This is like this is over the top though, because this humor is incredibly raunchy. And it, it wants to be shocking, I think. I mean, they're from the vagina cake to like the butt plug jokes. Like there's a lot of really incredibly raunchy. R-rated humor. And again, it's not offensive. It's trying really hard to shock you. And quite often it just awkwardly lands with a thud. Joke? Yeah, there's a joke about yes. a, someone someone who looks like a butt plug. Oh, Natasha Rothwell, Natasha by the way, is the other, is one fr- of the is the other friend who's very funny. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a whole thing with the, you know, there's a lot of really like raunchy stuff. And like Tiffany Haddish has this booty call. Jacob Lattimore is right. from her booty call. And then like, they speak very graphically about that. Smoking dope around a baby. Like yeah. there's, there's, they, 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 they're they, trying to push it. They're definitely trying <laughs> to be like R rated about it. But yeah, I, I, again, I, I mean, I, I don't disagree with anything <laughs> that you're saying about it, but I did laugh at a lot of just like individual one liners or like physical bits or whatever. So it's not, a, it's, a, but all the, but all at the same time realizing like just structurally, this is a shitty movie. Like, it's very sloppy. Like it is, it, it is definitely of that school of comedies that exists now where it's like they made up a lot of stuff on the set and just sort of now trying to editing it, editing it together into a feature as opposed to like, we actually wrote a thing with a structure and a, you know, like setups and payoffs and that kind of thing. I bet they just hoped that Tiffany Haddish and Rose Byrne could like show up. Yes. And And I hate that about contemporary comedy. Like I, I think so more often than not, you wind up with these really, a lot of, spaces of dead air and you don't end with like characters and a plot and things that you would need to sort of un- the, 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 the understructure of the humor to make a comedy good. Anyway, I'm saying two. And basically that wow. two is just because that one Billy Porter scene was so funny and, and everything mm-hmm. he does is, is funny. And again, like you want more for him and Jennifer Coolidge. They're oh, like, yeah. they're like the sidekicks who, who work at the store with yeah. them and you want more for them than just like sassy one liners and like bemused reaction shots. Mm-hmm. And every once in a while they get that. And that's why this movie gets a two from me. <laughs> I gave it I gave it a five and a half because I was fairly consistently laughing to my surprise. Because again, yes, January movie. All the while realizing, God, I wish this movie were better. Mm. And then by the end of it thinking, God, I wish this movie had a female voice behind the camera somewhere, because this is not what this movie is not what it thinks it is as far as talking about these topics. Matt. Uh, Six point five. Okay. Well, I'm get, uh, yeah. I, like I'm apparently don't, 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 exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. I, you know. I, look. Like if I was watching this stone cold sober, I probably would have still laughed. Um, yeah. I, I thought it was kind of fun. And not that men can't write good movies about women. I mean, you know, all about Eve. Come on. Sure. <laughs> sure. Sure. There are lots of them, and this is not one of them. Anyway, our, our numbers are four point <laughs> seven. Is it twenty three percent on the tomato meter? Yeah, it's a January movie, y'all. It Yay, is a, January. It's a January movie. Uh, thanks for watching. Like this video. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, and uh, visit us at Be Fast All Day on uh, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And check out our Patreon page at patreoncom slash day. This week, we're talking about trailers. We're talking about the lead up to Oscar nominations, which come out on Monday, and uh, soon we'll be back on the TV beat as well. So check all that out. If you've already joined, thanks very much. And if you haven't, maybe you ought to. Bye. Bye. Bye.